Buzzy Bees. It was a fine summer morning on the island of Sodor. The sun was shining, the birds sang, the flowers bloomed. And Thomas clickety-clacked along the track to Brendam Docks. Thomas's good friend, Hero, was unloading at Brendam Docks. Good morning, Hero. The fat controller tells me I have a special special today for Farmer Trotter. Good morning, my friend. Yes, you do. Look. Thomas <gasps> gasped. Flatten my funnel. They look like small white wooden houses. Who lives in them? Bees, my good friend. Lots and lots of bees. Their houses are called hives. Inside the hives, the bees are very busy making honey. This made Thomas excited. The fat controller always has honey on his crumpets. I'll puff as fast as I can to deliver the beehives to Farmer Trotter. Suddenly, Hero was stern. Thomas, chuff slowly and smoothly. Take the truck through the woods. Then the bees will rest. You have to look after bees very carefully. Don't worry, Hero. I will. They'll be happy with me. Hero smiled. Very well. I have to deliver these crates. Then I must pick up some flowers from Farmer McCall. I will visit the bees when I've finished. Hero steamed slowly away. Thomas was coupled up to the beehives. Off we go, bees! Thomas puffed proudly to a junction. Ahead, he saw the track through the woods. The other track ran past a field full of flowers and bright sunshine. The field with flowers is much prettier than the woods. I'm sure the bees would like that better. So Thomas didn't take the track through the wood, as Hero had told him to. Thomas huffed happily along. Buzzy bees are busy bees, and busy bees make honey. Buzzy bees are happy bees when it's warm and sunny. Suddenly, there was a buzzing and a bizzing. Thomas applied his brakes. Bust my buffers, what's that? Thomas looked over to the field. His bees were everywhere. They buzzed busily, flying from flower to flower. Thomas was surprised. Oh, no! Come back, bees! Come back to your hives! The bees weren't listening to Thomas. They were too busy buzzing in the field. Thomas tried again. Please come back, bees. We'll be late for Farmer Trotter. But still, the bees weren't listening to Thomas. Fizzling fireboxes. I can't take the beehives to Farmer Trotter empty. Then an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. The bees like flowers. I will chuff my hardest to Farmer McCall's and pick up the flatbed of flowers. Then the bees will buzz around my flowers and back to their hives. So Thomas was uncoupled from his flatbed. Then he steamed swiftly away. Thomas arrived at Farmer McCall's farm. He saw the flatbed of flowers. I'm sure Hero won't mind if I borrow his flowers. I'll bring them back as soon as the bees are in their hives again. And Thomas huffed happily back to the field. The bees were still buzzing busily from flower to flower in the field. Then they saw Thomas's flowery flatbed. The buzzy bees left the field and buzzed all around Thomas. They flew into his funnel. They buzzed his boiler and whizzed his wheels. Trembling tracks. This flatbed of flowers wasn't a good idea. Go away, bees, please. Buzz into your hives and make honey. But the bees weren't listening to Thomas. 
They were too busy buzzing. I must race like the wind. Then maybe the bees will be blown off my buffers and fly back to their hives. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away. But the bees didn't mind the wind on their wings. They flew round Thomas like a buzzing cloud. Thomas chuffed and puffed to a siding. Very well, bees. If you won't leave me, I will leave you. Thomas was uncoupled from his flatbed of flowers and he clickety-clacked away down the track. Now the buzzy bees won't bother me. They're too busy making honey for the Fat Controller's tea. Thomas chuffed to a junction. Hero was there. Thomas was surprised to see his friend. Hello, Hero. You look puzzled. I am Thomas. Farmer McCall's flowers have disappeared, and you have still not delivered the bees to Farmer Trotter. He's waiting and worried. Thomas looked at his wise friend, Hero. He hadn't looked after the bees, he hadn't looked after their hives, and he hadn't taken the woodland track. But he had taken Hero's flowers. Hero, I have been very silly. I have been everything you told me not to be. But now I will do everything you told me to do. Please wait for me here. I will bring you back your flowers. Thomas's wheels started to whir and his boiler started to bubble. Thomas had a lot to do. Thomas puffed back to the flatbed of flowers. The bees were still buzzing, but Thomas didn't mind. Follow me, bees. I'll take you back to your hives. And Thomas wished away to the flatbed of beehives. Farmer Trotter is waiting for you, bees. You will like living on his farm. Then Thomas chuffed carefully away and took the track through the woods. The woods were deep and dark. The bees felt cold. It's time to go home, all you busy bees. It's time to make honey in the shade of the trees. And the busy bees buzzed into their hives. Farmer Trotter was waiting for Thomas. He was very pleased to see his new beehives. Thank you, Thomas. Why have you brought me all those flowers? They're not for you, Farmer Trotter. Hero is waiting for these. I must hurry. Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed down the track. Hero was waiting for Thomas. So, my good friend, here are my flowers. I'm sorry, Hero. You will be late, I know. But from these flowers, Farmer Trotter will have the best honey on Sodor. The two friends smiled. It had been a very busy, buzzy day. Thomas and the Pigs. There are lots and lots of farms on the island of Sodor. There are farms with sheep. There are farms with cows. There are farms with goats. Thomas likes visiting all the farms. But his favourite farm of all was Farmer Trotter's pig farm. Thomas liked their curly tails and the funny noises they made. Thomas liked to visit Farmer Trotter's pig farm as often as he could. One day, Thomas was watching the pigs roll in the mud. Farmer Trotter was happy to see Thomas. Hello, Farmer Trotter. Hello, Thomas. I have some very special news. One of my pigs is going to have piglets today. 
Thomas was excited. I can't wait to see them. I need some soft straw for the piglets. I'd like you to go to Farmer McCall's right now to collect it. He'll be waiting for you. Thomas was happy to help. Yes, Farmer Trotter. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully away with his empty flatbed. On his way to Farmer McCall's, Thomas thought about the pigs. I'm sure the piglets will like the soft straw. I wonder if there's anything else they'd like. Thomas puffed up to the dairy. He saw Percy. Thomas told Percy all about the piglets. How exciting! I wish I could see them, but I have to deliver this milk. Thomas looked at the milk churns. An idea flew into his funnel. I'm sure the piglets would like some milk. May I have some? Of course you can, Thomas. So the milk churns were loaded onto Thomas's flatbed. Thank you, Percy. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. And he steamed away. Thomas felt pleased. I wonder what else the piglets might like. Then Thomas saw James. James was at an orchard. The trees were full of juicy red apples. Hello, James. Hello, Thomas. Thomas told James all about the piglets. The piglets will soon be born. I must collect some soft straw for them. I wish I could see the piglets, but I have to deliver these boxes of apples to the village. Thomas looked at the juicy red apples. I'm sure the piglets would like some juicy red apples. May I have some? Of course you can. So Thomas's flatbed was loaded with lots and lots of juicy red apples. Thank you, James. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. Thomas chuffed quickly away. He felt very pleased. I wonder what else the piglets might like. Then Thomas saw some children. They were collecting shiny brown chestnuts. Hello. Thomas told the children all about the piglets. They were very excited. I'm sure the piglets would like some shiny brown chestnuts to eat. Please, may I have some for them? The children were delighted to give Thomas some of their shiny brown chestnuts. Thank you. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. And Thomas puffed away. He felt even more pleased. At last, Thomas chuffed to Farmer McCall's farm. Farmer McCall was waiting. He was cross. Thomas, you're late. Where have you been? I'm sorry, Farmer McCall. I stopped to collect some milk, some juicy red apples, and some shiny brown chestnuts for the piglets. Farmer McCall looked at Thomas's flatbed. He saw the milk, the juicy red apples, and shiny brown chestnuts. Your flatbed is full. You have no room for straw now. Fizzling fireboxes. I didn't think about that. I hope the piglets will like the milk, the apples, and the chestnuts just as much as straw. I must puff straight back to Farmer Trotter's. The piglets will be born soon. So Thomas pumped his pistons and chuffed quickly away. Thomas pulled up at the farm. Farmer Trotter was waiting. He looked at Thomas's full flatbed. He was surprised. Thomas, where's the soft straw? I thought the piglets would like these things just as much as straw. No, Thomas. Piglets need soft straw, and they're about to be born. Thomas felt very silly. I'm sorry. I'll empty my flatbed, then I'll puff back to Farmer McCall's as fast as I can. I must get this straw. There can be no delay. The piglets will need it by the end of the day. Thomas saw Percy at the water tower. 
Thomas, I know something else that Piglets would like. I'm sorry, Percy. I can't stop. Bye, Thomas. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. I've no time for chatter along the way. Next, Thomas saw James at a junction. Hello, Thomas. I've been thinking about the piglets. I'm sure they'd like... I'm sorry, James. I can't stop. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. I've no time for chatter along the way. Thomas whooshed and he wheeshed. He huffed and he puffed until he arrived at Farmer McColl's farm. It was late. Hello, Farmer McColl. Now I have plenty of room for the soft straw for the piglets. Could you load it right now? Of course I can, Thomas. Thank you, Farmer McColl. I must hurry. Thomas's pistons pumped and his axles ached. I must puff fast. There's no time for delay. The piglets need straw by the end of the day. At last, Thomas arrived at Farmer Trotter's pig farm. It was now nearly night time. Thomas saw that the pigs had gone. Cinders and ashes. I'm too late. You're just in time, Thomas. I need that soft straw right away. Farmer Trotter unloaded the straw from Thomas's flatbed and he took it away to make a nice soft bed for the piglets. The piglets have just been born! Thomas was delighted. Bubbling boilers! Look how small they are and how sweet! Thomas could see the piglets really like the soft straw. Ah, oh, that little piglet is looking at me. I think I'll call him Thomas. Thomas was so happy his axles tingled and his boiler bubbled. <coughs> Tickled Pink. James was the brightest red engine on the island of Sodor. His bright red paint made him feel very proud and it made him feel very special. One morning, James was about to puff out of Tidmouth's sheds. The fat controller arrived to see him. James, you are to have a new coat of paint. You must puff straight to the steamworks. James was pleased. Thank you, sir. I will be the smartest engine on the whole island. James whistled with pride. James puffed proudly into the steamworks. The workmen were waiting. First, they took off James's old coat of red paint. Then, they applied a special pink paint. The pink paint was to go under the new red coat. It was to keep the water out. Soon, James was covered from fender to firebox in bright pink paint. Just then, the fat controller arrived. My granddaughter is having her birthday party today. Emily was to pick her up at Maithwaite Station, but she has broken down. The other engines are busy. You must collect the children and take them to the party. But, sir, I'm not ready. You're quite ready enough, James. Leave right away. The party starts at tea time. You mustn't be late. The fat controller left. James was upset. Oh, no. Pink is a silly colour. I don't want anyone to see me looking silly. James puffed up to a junction. Emily was there. She was waiting for the workman. Cinders and ashes. You're bright. Pink, James? Emily laughed and laughed. <laughs> oh, no! Everyone is going to laugh at me because I'm pink. James didn't want to be laughed at. Then an idea flew into his funnel. If I see any other engines on the way to the children, I'll hide.
James chuffed through the countryside. Ahead, he could see Toby puffing along the track. I don't want Toby to see my pink paint. He'll think I'm silly. I'll hide under this tree until he's gone. So James chuffed under the branches of a willow tree. Toby puffed slowly towards him. James kept as quiet as he could so that Toby wouldn't hear him. Suddenly, James heard a whistle he knew well. It was Gordon. Clickety-clack, express on the track. With a whoosh and a whoosh and a whistling wind, Gordon thundered down the express line. The branches of the tree blew up in the air. There was James in his bright pink paint. Toby stopped. He was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes, James. You're a big pink engine. <laughs> James felt very silly. He didn't like being laughed at, so he steamed swiftly away. James puffed on towards Maithwaite. I mustn't be late for the children. Then James saw Diesel. Oh, no! It's Diesel. He's sure to laugh. I have to hide quickly. James saw some trucks. They were piled high with coal. James puffed into the siding and hid behind the trucks. Oh, this is a good hiding place. Then Diesel oiled into the siding. Fizzling fenders. Diesel had to shunt the coal trucks. Diesel shunted away the trucks that James was hiding behind. So James puffed to the next trucks. Then Diesel shunted those away as well. Quickly, James rolled behind the last two trucks. Then Diesel shunted them away. Oh, no! Diesel was surprised. What are you doing, James? You're a big pink steamy! <laughs> James felt terrible. Being laughed at by Diesel was worst of all. So James chuffed quickly away. James knew he was getting late. He had to pick up the children before tea time. I'll take a shortcut through this tunnel. That way, I'm sure to chuff to Maithwaite on time. James puffed out of the tunnel. Then he heard a whistle. It's Gordon. Oh, no. I don't want Gordon to laugh at my silly pink paint. I have to hide. So James reversed back into the tunnel and waited. Gordon pulled up to the tunnel. He could see steam. Who's hiding in there? Express coming through. Come on out. James didn't want to come out. He was sure Gordon would laugh at him. Then Thomas and Percy puffed up. What's happening? Who's in there? I don't know, but the Express can't wait. James knew the engines were waiting for him, and so were the children. If I keep hiding, I'll be late to pick up the children, and they'll be late for their party. So with a puff and a huff, James chuffed slowly out of the tunnel. He was very unhappy. James, uh, you're all uh, uh, pink. Uh, what a funny colour. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hide too if I was bright pink. James <laughs> felt terrible. All the engines were laughing. But James knew what he had to do. I feel very silly, but I can't let the children down. James hurried to Maithwaite as fast as his pistons could pump. James saw Spencer at a junction. Spencer thought James looked very silly. <laughs> oh dear, James. Bright pink really isn't your colour. <laughs> James didn't like this, but this time, even though he felt silly, he didn't hide. I mustn't be late for the children. Then James saw Henry passing by. <laughs> My word, you do look pink. But James didn't hide. He felt silly, but he didn't stop. 
Must collect the children. Must collect the children. James puffed towards Maithwaite. He could see the children waiting. I'm sure the children will laugh too. They will think I look very silly. And he steamed sadly onto the station. James pulled into Maithwaite. The fat controller's granddaughter didn't laugh. And she didn't think James looked silly at all. She smiled. She was very excited and very happy. James, you're a pink engine. Pink is my favourite colour. James couldn't believe it. Do you really like pink? I love pink and so do all my friends. Look, pink, pink is, is our, our favourite colour. James was so happy it made his boiler bubble. I'm a very lucky engine. James puffed proudly into the town hall just in time for the party. The children laughed and clapped their hands. James the bright pink engine was the hero of the day. Playtime. All the engines on the island of Sodor are very happy. They are all pleased to work on the Fat Controller's Railway. There is always something new and exciting to look forward to, like the day the famous singer Alicia Botti came to give a concert at the town hall. Thomas met Percy at the washdown. His boiler bubbled with pride. Hello, Percy. I have a very special special. I must meet Alicia Botti at the docks. Then I have to take her straight to the town hall for a grand concert. That's exciting. I have news too. Someone else is arriving at the docks. Thomas was puzzled. Charlie, the new engine. Thomas hadn't heard about Charlie. What's so special about Charlie? He's the favourite engine of the mainland controller. Everyone says he's the most fun engine ever. Even more fun than you, Thomas. <whistles> Percy chuffed cheerfully away. Bumpers and buffers. I don't think any engine is more fun than me. And Thomas puffed off to the docks, his wheels whirring with worry. Thomas collected Alicia Botti at the docks. Miss Botti looked very grand. I'm pleased to be travelling with you, Thomas. Thomas's pistons popped with pride. Then he saw Charlie. Charlie's smaller than me, and he certainly doesn't look more fun than me. Hello, are you Thomas? Yes, I am. I'm Charlie. I've heard a lot about you. You have? The engines on the mainland say you're even more fun than me. Thomas was surprised. Then the Fat Controller arrived. Thomas, Charlie has a busy first day. Edward has broken down. Charlie must pick up Edward's trucks of seats from the steamworks. Then he has to collect ice cream from the dairy and red carpet from Knapford Station. If Charlie needs help, I'm sure you will look after him. Yes, sir. Yippee! Wanna come with me? Why? It'll be fun. Sorry, I'm busy. I heard you were a fun engine. Maybe you're not fun at all. Thomas didn't like being told he was no fun at all. I'll come with you to the steamworks and then I'll take Miss Botty to the town hall. I'm sure I have plenty of time. So Thomas steamed slowly towards the steamworks, and Charlie followed behind. Thomas chuffed carefully to a junction. Miss Botty smiled sweetly from her carriage. Charlie pulled up alongside. This isn't fun. I'll show you fun. Yippee! <laughs> Thomas couldn't let Charlie be more fun than him. He pumped his pistons, bubbled his boiler and fizzed his firebox. The race was on. Thomas and Charlie roared and raced. The funnels were fiery. They were soon red-faced. Alicia Botti could not believe her eyes. My goodness me, this is a surprise. I thought Thomas was steady and slow. What thrills and what fun on the way to my show. The engines were laughing. The race was such fun. You're quick and you're speedy, but I'm number one. With a whoosh and a whoosh, the two engines pulled into the steamworks. Steady, boys. Who's your friend, Thomas? Charlie. He's new. I'm fun. And I'm Alicia Botti. <gasps> Miss Botti. 
It is an honor to have you visit our Steamworks. Kevin! Sorry, boss. And while Charlie was coupled up to Edward's flatbed, Miss Botty sang to the Steamworks. <laughs> then it was time to go. You are fun, Thomas. Let's go to the dairy. Thomas knew he should take Miss Botty straight to the town hall, but he didn't want Charlie to think he wasn't fun. I'm sure I still have time to get Miss Botty to the town hall. So Thomas and Charlie left for the dairy. Soon, the two engines came to a junction. Let's puff down there! We can't. That's a bumpy track. But it'll be fun! Thomas wanted to be fun. So he followed Charlie down the bumpy track. Thomas and Charlie bounced and bumped. Alicia Botty juddered and jumped. And the couplings jiggered and jiggled. Looser and looser. At last, Thomas and Charlie pulled up to the dairy. That was fun! <laughs> and this is even more fun! We must go, Miss Botty. You mustn't be late for the concert. Bye-bye! If you were a really fun engine, you would race me to Knapford. Thomas knew he was late, but he wanted to be really fun. Just one last race, Charlie. Thomas and Charlie thundered and roared. Thomas thought he had never puffed so fast. I'm first. Let's race again. Then Gordon whooshed past. He was huffing grandly. He was taking the fat controller to the town hall. Thomas gasped. <gasps> I'm late. I must wish like the wind to the town hall. Thomas pumped his pistons and he chuffed away quickly in a cloud of steam. I mustn't be late. I mustn't be late. Then there was trouble. Thomas didn't know that his couplings had come loose. Thomas raced on to the town hall alone. Thomas steamed to a stop. His cheeks were redder than James's shiny coat. Here I am, sir. The fat controller looked hard at Thomas. Here you are, Thomas. But where are Annie and Clarabel? And where is Miss Botty? Thomas felt terrible. He had been having fun when he should have been really useful. I'm sorry, sir. I've lost them. The fat controller boomed. Then you had better go and find them. Thomas puffed to a junction. He had looked for Annie and Clarabel, but he couldn't find them anywhere. Then Charlie chuffed up. He was on his way to the town hall. Hello, Charlie. I've lost Annie and Clarabel and Miss Botty. The couplings must have come loose on the bumpy track and snapped when we were racing. Don't worry, Thomas. I have a good idea. What's that? We'll have a race. Whoever finds Annie and Clarabel first is the number one fun engine. Thomas was stern. He didn't think that was a good idea. No, Charlie. This isn't the time for fun. This is the time for being really useful. I have a very important job to do. And Thomas huffed away. Thomas chuffed carefully. He was very worried. Then Thomas heard singing. He smiled from buffer to buffer. That's Miss Botty singing. Hooray! Thomas found Miss Botty by the bridge. He had never heard anything as beautiful as Miss Botty singing. Miss Botty, we must go. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. And Miss Botty cheerfully waved goodbye as the crowd clapped and cheered. Thomas puffed to the town hall with Annie and Clarabel. The fat controller was cross. At last, Thomas, you've made Miss Botty very late. Not at all, Bertram. Thomas has made me very happy. I've had the ride of my life. So many people to sing to and such fun. That made Thomas smile. And so did his fun friend, Charlie. Time for a story. 
It was a beautiful day on the island of Sodor. The sun was shining and the birds were singing. Thomas had worked hard all morning. He tooted happily to the children as he chuffed back to Tidmouth Sheds. The fat controller was waiting. He had an important special. This afternoon there is to be a special story time for the children at the library. I need an engine to collect the new storybooks from Maithwaite Station and take them to the library. Thomas wished his hardest that he would be given the special Listening to stories with the children was his favourite thing to do. Thomas, you will deliver the special. Make sure the books are at the library on time. Thomas was excited. Yes, sir. And Thomas chuffed cheerfully away. Thomas puffed fast along the tracks. I mustn't be late for story time. I'll chuff and I'll puff to be there on time. Thomas steamed in to Maithwaite Station. Hello, Thomas. I'm here to collect the new storybooks. We'll have your trucks ready in two toots of a whistle, Thomas. Thomas saw the storybooks piled high in the two trucks. There were red books, green books and blue books. There were big books, small books, square books and even round books. They look wonderful. Soon Thomas was coupled up to the trucks. I must hurry. I have to deliver the storybooks to the library on time. Thomas was very excited. He pumped his pistons and puffed quickly out of the station. Thomas didn't wait for the books to be covered. Thomas steamed quickly along the track. I mustn't be late for story time. I'll chuff and I'll puff to be there on time. The books began to jiggle and joggle, but Thomas didn't notice. Thomas puffed fast towards the junction. He could see the signal ahead was red. I don't want to stop. The children are waiting for their special story time. Then an idea flew into his funnel. I can take the branch line. I know there aren't any junctions on that. So Thomas puffed quickly down the branch line. Thomas felt very pleased. He chuffed faster and faster and the books jiggled and joggled more and more. But Thomas didn't notice. I mustn't be late for story time. I'll chuff and I'll puff to be there on time. Thomas raced round a bend. Ahead, there was a sign for works on the track. Oh, bother! I'm sure the works on the tracks won't stop me. So Thomas puffed faster and faster. Then there was trouble. Workers were mending the broken track. The broken track was very bumpy. Thomas bumped and jumped. The books jiggled and joggled. Then Thomas hit the biggest bump of all. Whoa! Cinders and ashes! The trucks bounced high in the air. They crashed and bashed. They clattered and shattered down to the tracks. Thomas put on his brakes. The books flew high and wide through the air and landed all over Farmer McCall's field. Oh my! The trucks are broken. The storybooks are all over the field. And the children now won't have their special story time. And it's all my fault. I was in such a hurry to be on time, I didn't want to wait. I should have waited for the books to be covered. And I shouldn't have taken the bumpy branch line. Oh dear. 
Ugh, fizzling fireboxes. What am I going to do? Thomas looked at the storybooks. The sun was shining on them. The books looked even redder and greener and bluer than they had in the trucks. The storybooks look so pretty in this field. I wish the children could see them. Then an idea flew into his funnel. I'll bring the children to the storybooks. They can have a picnic story time in the sunshine. That really will be special. So Thomas puffed off to collect the children. First, I must collect Annie and Clarabelle. Victor and Kevin were busy at work as Thomas chuffed into the Sodor Steamworks. Hello, Victor. I'm here to collect Annie and Clarabelle. I'm going to take the children to a special picnic story time in the sunshine. That's a wonderful idea, my friend. The children will like that. They always have their best time with you, Thomas. Thomas was pleased Victor and Kevin liked his idea. Later, Thomas huffed happily out of the steamworks with Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas puffed proudly up to library at the town hall. The children were waiting. They were very surprised to see Annie and Clarabelle instead of trucks of storybooks. Today, I am taking you to an extra special story time. It's a picnic story time in the sunshine. All aboard! <laughs> The children had never had a picnic story time. They thought it was a wonderful idea. Thomas blew his whistle and chuffed cheerfully away. Thomas puffed towards the junction. This time, Thomas waited. Then, he took the branch line back to Farmer McColl's field. Thomas chuffed slowly and carefully up to Farmer McColl's field. Here we are, the picnic story time special. The children cheered. They could see all the different colored books in the field. They were very excited. This was the best story time ever. Thomas watched as the children ran onto the field. They each picked up a book and their teacher began to read with them. This is a story, children, all about a little boy. A little boy who didn't like waiting. He didn't like waiting because he thought he'd miss out on all the good things. But then he found out that good things are worth waiting for. As the story began, Thomas looked at all the happy children. He smiled his biggest smile. The children's picnic story time really is worth waiting for. Toby's new whistle. It was a bright sunny day on the island of Sodor. All the engines chuffed cheerfully. Everyone was smiling. Everyone except Toby. Toby was at the steamworks. Toby's bell had stopped working. It was covered in rust and didn't clang and chime anymore. It had to stay in the steamworks to be cleaned. So Toby was very sad. Victor didn't have another bell for Toby, so he had to be fitted with a new steam whistle. Easy does it, Kevin, my friend. Left a little, no, right a little. Perfect! Very good, my friend. How does that feel, Toby? Toby thought the new whistle felt very strange. It was much bigger than his old bell. He was worried. I've never used a steam whistle before. James chuffed into the steamworks with the fat controller. Hello, Toby. That's a three-chime steam whistle. I used to have one of those. This made Toby even more worried. Is it a good whistle? It's the best. It's the loudest whistle in the whole of Sodor. The loudest? Yes. 
It's loud and booming. Everyone will hear you coming. Toby didn't like this. He didn't like loud and booming noises. He liked the ting-a-ling-a-ling of his old bell. Toby, you must go to Knapford and collect Lady Hat. She's waiting, so don't be late. Yes, sir. So Toby chuffed off to Knapford Station with his new three-chime steam whistle. I wish I had my old bell back. I don't know how to use this new loud and booming three-chime steam whistle. Then an idea flew into Toby's funnel. If I puff slowly and carefully, I won't need to use my whistle at all. I can do all my jobs and wait for my old bell to be fixed. This made Toby feel much happier. Toby steamed slowly through Sodor. Gordon huffed and puffed impatiently behind him. Out of my way, Toby, you old steam tram! You're making me late! Later, some cows were on the tracks in front of Toby. He couldn't puff past them. Go away, cows, please. I need to chuff through. But the cows didn't take any notice of Toby. They didn't move. They were too busy mooing and chewing. Toby knew what he needed to do. He needed to blow his new steam whistle. But Toby was scared. I don't want to use this new three-chime steam whistle. I wish I had my little bell back. Then another idea flew into Toby's funnel. I know what I can do. I'll get help. So Toby reversed down the track to find help. Some farm workers were working in the field. Excuse me? Hello? Hello? The farm workers didn't hear Toby. Toby blew steam and rattled his rods. But the farm workers still didn't hear Toby. They were too far away. Bust my buffers, they can't hear me. Toby knew he should use his new steam whistle, but he was still too scared. Oh, I wish I had my little bell back. So Toby puffed on. Somewhere he had to find help. But Toby couldn't find anybody to help him. So he huffed back to the cows. I do hope the cows have gone back to their field now. But the cows hadn't gone back to their field. They were still mooing and chewing all over the tracks. Oh, no! Toby tried to biff them with his cow catcher. But they still wouldn't move. Oh, no, Henrietta. I think we're trapped. <gasps> then there was trouble. Toby heard a noise that made his wheels wobble. Another engine is coming. They'll crash into the cows. The engine steamed round the corner. It was Thomas. Thomas was racing like the wind. His firebox was fuming and his boiler was burning brightly. I have to tell Thomas about the cows. I'll have to use this new whistle. Toby closed his eyes, his firebox flared, and steam blew into his new three-chime steam whistle. It was the loudest whistle anyone had ever heard on Sodor. What was that? It was a three-chime steam whistle. They're the best whistles ever. I wonder who blew that? Thomas heard the three-chime steam whistle. Cinders and ashes, I must stop. He applied his brakes. Thomas screeched and skidded. Sparks flew and tracks trembled. Toby didn't dare look. Ew! Thank you, Toby. Your whistle told me there was trouble ahead. Toby felt very proud. I'm pleased I use my three-chime steam whistle. It was even louder than my bell. Thomas was proud of his friend Toby. Together with their whistles and weesh, Toby and Thomas moved the cows from the track. Then 
Toby remembered Lady Hat. Fizzling fireboxes. I've forgotten all about Lady Hat. She's waiting for me at Knapford. I must puff faster than Gordon to chuff there on time. Don't worry, Toby. I'll puff with you. We're sure to make it together. Thomas and Toby huffed and puffed towards Knapford Station. Suddenly, the fat controller arrived. He was very cross. Toby, Lady Hat waited for a very long time. Now Gordon is taking her home. Toby was upset. He knew he hadn't been a really useful engine. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Then Toby stopped. He saw something ahead. There's a fallen tree across the tracks. And Gordon is steaming straight towards it. Oh, no! Don't worry, sir. I know just what to do. Toby bubbled his boiler and pumped his pistons. He blew his three-chime steam whistle as loudly and as boomingly as he could. Gordon heard Toby's whistle. He applied his brakes and screeched to a halt. Toby, did you blow that whistle so loudly? Yes, I did. It was my new three-chime steam whistle. For a steam tram, you have a lot of puff. Thank you. Well done, Toby. Toby couldn't have felt more proud. Good job, Toby. Toby was back at the steamworks. His little bell was ready. It glistened and gleamed as if it were brand new. Toby was happy. Bye-bye, big new steam whistle. Victor and Kevin had heard the news that Toby had saved Thomas and Gordon. Well, Toby, my friend, it sounds as if you had a very busy day. Did you like the new three-chan steam whistle? It was very useful. You can keep it if you like, my friend. No, thank you. My bell is the best of all. <laughs> the Lion of Sodor. It was a beautiful day on the island of Sodor. The sky was blue and the sun was shining brightly. Thomas was chuffing cheerfully to Brendam Docks. He felt very happy. Thomas had to collect the special special, but he didn't know what it was. Hello, Cranky. Is my special ready? Yes, it is. The mayor is waiting for it at Knapford. You must puff very carefully. Thomas was puzzled. What is it, Cranky? It's the Lion of Sodor. Cinders and ashes, how exciting. I promise to take extra special care of it. I've never carried a real live lion before. When Cranky heard this, he was surprised. No, Thomas, the Lion of Sodor, isn't it? But Thomas was too excited to listen to Cranky. He was already puffing proudly out of the docks. Thomas huffed happily along. Then he met Henry. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Bust my buffers. That's exciting. I only have sticky syrup to deliver. Suddenly, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I promised to take extra special care of my lion. I think he might really like sticky syrup. Could I have some for him, Henry? Of course. Thomas's driver poured some sticky syrup into the lion's crate. Thank you, Henry. I have to hurry now. The mayor is waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Henry was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes. Thomas has made a mistake. Oh, stop, Thomas. Uh, the Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas didn't stop and he didn't listen. Next, Thomas met Edward. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Flat my funnel. How exciting. I only have to deliver fresh fish. I think my lion would really like fresh fish. 
May I have some for him, Edward? Of course. So Thomas's driver put some fresh fish into the lion's crate. Thank you, Edward. I must hurry now. The mayor is waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Edward was surprised. <gasps> Clattering carriages. Stop, Thomas. The Lion of Sodor isn't it? But Thomas didn't stop and he didn't listen. Then Thomas saw Toby. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Buff my boiler. How exciting. I only have straw in my trucks. I'm sure my lion would really like some soft straw to lie on. May I have some for him, Toby? Of course. Thomas's driver put some soft straw into the lion's crate. Thank you, Toby. I really have to hurry. The mayor will be waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Toby was surprised. Oh, no. Trembling trucks. Stop, Thomas. The Lion of Sodor is never... But Thomas didn't stop and he didn't listen. Thomas's pistons pumped and his wheels whirred. He couldn't wait to deliver his lion. He chuffed his hardest and raced on towards Knapford Station. At last, Thomas puffed proudly into Knapford. The fat controller was there, and so were the other engines. I'm very excited, Thomas. This is a big day. The Lion of Sodor is here. Thomas was uncoupled from the flatbed, and he pulled away to join the other engines. The workman carefully opened the lion's crate. Then the engines gasped. The Lion of Sodor wasn't a real lion at all. It was a statue. And now it was covered in sticky syrup, fresh fish and straw. The fat controller was cross. Thomas, this is a terrible mess. Gordon and James <laughs> laughed. Thomas felt very silly. I'm sorry. I thought I had a real lion in my crate. I wanted to take extra special care of it. I didn't know the Lion of Sodor was a statue. So the fat controller told Thomas all about the Lion of Sodor, and the other engines listened carefully. So you see, Thomas, it was the most famous statue on Sodor. Then it broke. This is the shiny new statue we have been waiting for. The mayor is coming at tea time. And now look at it. I'll make sure it's clean, sir. I promise. The Lion of Sodor will be shiny and new again in no time. Very well, Thomas. Thomas still felt very silly. Cheer up, Thomas. I didn't know the Lion of Sodor was a statue either. It all happened a long, long time ago. Not many engines remember that time. We tried to tell you, but you didn't stop. I'm sorry, Henry. I should have listened. Now I must hurry. I must get the line of Sodor cleaned right away. Why don't you take it to the washdown? This time, Thomas listened. What a good idea. Thank you, Henry. Thomas was coupled to the flatbed, and he chuffed quickly away. Thomas took the line of Sodor to the washdown. Soon, the sticky mess was washed off. That looks much better, Thomas. But the statue isn't shiny. Take it to the steamworks, Thomas. They'll polish it until it sparkles and shines. This time, Thomas listened. Thank you, Edward. That's a very good idea. Victor will know just what to do. And Thomas puffed quickly away. Thomas took the Lion of Sodor to the steamworks. Workmen polished the statue until it shone and sparkled, just as Edward had said. The Lion of Sodor looks much better now, Thomas. But it's nearly tea time. The mail will soon be at Knapford, and it's a long way. Take the track by the windmill. That'll get you there in time. 
This time, Thomas listened. Thank you, Toby. That's a good idea. So Thomas took the shortcut past the windmill. He huffed and puffed as fast as his pistons could pump towards Knapford. Children cheered and passengers waved as Thomas chuffed by. Everyone wanted to see the Lion of Sodor. And everyone wanted Thomas to stop. I can't stop now. I mustn't be late. The mail will be at Knapford and he won't wait. And Thomas whooshed on his way. Thomas puffed proudly into Knapford Station. The mayor had just arrived. He was delighted to see the new Lion of Sodor. The statue shone and sparkled in the sun. Well done, Thomas. This is the finest statue I've ever seen. And the cleanest. <laughs> Everyone cheered, and Thomas smiled from footplate to fender. Snow tracks. It was winter time on the island of Sodor. It had snowed all night. The trees were white, the cottages were white, and even the fat controller's railway was white. There was not an engine in sight. At Tidmouth Sheds, the engines looked out. Percy was very excited. It snowed! Thomas didn't like the snow. Bother! I'll have to wear my heavy snowplow. I don't like snow. You can get stuck in it. Stuff and nonsense. Snow is soft, but I am strong. It won't bother me. Then the Fat Controller arrived. Gordon, you must take some trucks to Brendam Docks. They are needed for an important coal delivery. You are a strong engine, but snow is slippery. Puff the long way around. Yes, sir. Thomas, you must deliver bundles of firewood to the stations. Yes, sir. And then the Fat Controller left. Thomas puffed with pride. That's a very special job. Not as important as mine. I shall go straight to the docks. I shall steam over every hill I come to. Gordon pumped his pistons proudly. Puffed the long way round. That means, Gordon, don't go up any hills. Hills are not too steep for me. I am strong. I am the best. And Gordon wished out of Tidmouth Sheds. Gordon huffed and he puffed. His smoke was grey against the snowy white countryside. Soon, Gordon came to a hill. This hill isn't too steep for me. I shall steam over it. So Gordon thundered up the hill. I am special. I am the best. And he chuffed right to the top. That was easy. But Gordon found going down the other side wasn't so easy. The rails were icy. Gordon's wheels slipped and slid. He went faster and faster. Perishing pistons! Spencer was huffing up the hill. The Duke and Duchess of Boxford were on board. They were having tea. Slow down, Gordon! But Gordon couldn't slow down. Slushy snow sprayed from his wheels. Spencer was covered from footplate to fender. Rattle my rods! I'm as dirty as a ditch! But Gordon didn't hear as he clickety-clacked on the icy tracks. Gordon came to another hill. It was even bigger. This hill isn't too steep for me. I shall steam over it. So Gordon thundered up the hill. I am special. I am the best. But the tracks were icy. The snow was deep and the hill was very, very steep. Gordon steamed slower and slower. Bust my boiler! This is hard work! Wheel turn by wheel turn, Gordon huffed and puffed to the top of the hill. 
He felt very pleased. I am the strongest. I am the best. But at the bottom of the hill, there was deep, deep snow. The snow flew up all over Gordon's face. Bubbling boilers, I can't see. Gordon rattled off the main track and into a siding, straight into the back of some slate trucks. Gordon was covered in thick grey dust. Oh, the indignity! At least I can see now. And Gordon huffed on towards the docks. The snow was deeper and deeper and deeper. Gordon could hardly huff through it. This is hard work. Now Gordon was at the bottom of Gordon's Hill. Gordon's Hill was the biggest of all, and it was covered in thick, thick snow. Gordon's Hill isn't too steep for me. I shall steam over it. I am strong. I am the best. But Gordon didn't feel so strong anymore, and he didn't feel the best. Gordon puffed against the snow. Snow is soft, and I am strong. It won't bother me. But the snow wasn't soft. It had become a giant snowball. It grew bigger and bigger. Gordon started to huff slower and slower. He thought his boiler was going to burst. Oh, my! Just then, Thomas chuffed up behind Gordon. Thanks for clearing the tracks, Gordon. Now I can deliver the firewood faster. Then there was trouble. The giant snowball was too big and too heavy. It started to push Gordon back down the hill. Look out, Thomas! Cinders and ashes! Gordon and his trucks rolled back faster and faster. Thomas chuffed back faster and faster. He slipped into a siding and Gordon rolled round a bend. The giant snowball will surely miss us now. But Gordon was wrong. The giant snowball rolled down the track and crashed and bashed into Thomas. Help! Gordon saw Thomas and his truck of firewood lifted high in the air and derailed. Now it was Thomas who looked like a giant snowball. Luckily, no one was hurt. Gordon felt terrible. I'm not strong. And I'm not the best. It's a disaster. Gordon steamed slowly to Thomas. I'm sorry, Thomas. I'll huff my hardest to help you. Gordon heaved and hauled. He pushed and puffed, but the snow was too heavy. The snow was too thick. Gordon could not chuff through it to help his friend. I'm not strong enough, Thomas. I'll find Rocky. He's stronger than me. Gordon found Rocky at Brandon Docks. Hello, Thomas. I'll have you back on the tracks in no time. Soon, Thomas was no longer a snowball. He was a bright blue engine again. Thank you, Rocky. Now I must deliver my firewood. I'm very late. The station masters will be waiting, and they'll be very cold. I'll help you, Thomas. What about your very important job? I delivered my trucks to the docks. Now I can help you with your very important job. Thomas was happy to have his friends help. Thank you, Gordon. Thomas and Gordon chuffed cheerfully through the snow. And when they came to a hill, they always puffed around it. Together, Thomas and Gordon delivered the firewood to all the stations. The station masters were very pleased to see them. At last, Gordon and Thomas puffed home to Tidmouth Sheds. They were tired, but they were happy to have been really useful. Gordon wished grandly. I have something very important to say. No engine is special, and every engine is best. Thomas and his friends whistled. They all agreed with Gordon. 
hero helps out. The engines on the island of Sodor like to be busy. They heave and haul. They huff and puff. And most of all, they like to please the fat controller. One morning, Hero chuffed in to Napford Station. There was hustle and bustle, noise and steam. It was another busy day at Napford. Then, the fat controller hurried onto the platform without his hat. Hero gasped. <gasps> sir, good morning, sir. I hope the day finds you well, sir. The day finds me with much too much to do, Hero. That's how the day finds me. I can see, sir. What are you staring at, Hero? Nothing, sir. Just your hat, sir. Excuse me. Edward puffed in. Hello, Hero. You look worried. Not at all. Then there was trouble. Blistering boilers. In all my long years, I've never seen that before. <coughs> Hero was worried for the fat controller. Sir, can I help you, sir? It's a very busy day, Hero. I have to visit the Thin Controller. I must talk with him about the railways. Hero knew this was important. I understand, sir. I must be away from Knapford. Of course, sir. Now Edward was worried. Sir? Not now, Edward. Edward was still worried. I have to pick up visitors from Brendam Docks. I don't know where to take them. Hero didn't know where the visitors should go either, but he didn't want to bother the Fat Controller. Then an idea flew into his funnel. Take them to the hills, Edward. They will enjoy the hills. So Edward puffed away to Brendam Docks and the hills. Hero felt happy. He was master of the railway, as he liked to be. Hero puffed up to the water tower. Thomas was there. He was taking on water. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Hero. Where are you going, Thomas? To Knapford. I must ask the Fat Controller where to take these crates of benches and tables. Hero still didn't want to bother the Fat Controller. The Fat Controller is busy now, Thomas. He will tell you where to go later. You have time to visit your friend, Farmer Trotter. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully away to Farmer Trotter's farm. Hero was happy. He was helping the Fat Controller. Hero steamed up to a junction. Percy was there. He had a flatbed full of quacking ducks. Hello, Percy. How are you? Percy was worried. Hello, Hero. These ducks are very noisy. They want to go swimming. I have to find the fat controller. He will tell me where I must take them for a swim. Hero still didn't want to bother the fat controller. The fat controller is very busy, Percy. Perhaps you could puff to the Finland. The ducks will be happy there. Thank you, Hero. Hero was happy. Helping the fat controller was the best job he had ever had. Hero huffed happily to a crossing. The Fat Controller was there. Hero, while I was with the Thin Controller, I heard worrying news. Farmer McCall is waiting for his ducks. There are no tables or benches for the concert at tea time. 
and Edward is late for a concert at the town hall. <gasps> Hero gasped. The fat controller was cross. The fat controller was cross with him, and it was all his fault. Hero felt worse than ever. He had been master of the railway, and now he was master of the muddle. I'm sorry, sir. I'm very sorry, sir. I knew you were very busy. I wanted to help, so I told the engines what to do. I didn't want to bother you, sir. <gasps> the fat controller gasped. You didn't want to bother me? I am controller of the railway. Nothing is more important to me than my engines being really useful. Hero gulped. I know that now, sir. I'm not master of the railway. I'm master of the muddle. I can put this right. Please give me time. And Hero wished quickly away. Hero found Edward in the hills. Hello, Hero. My visitors are very happy. Good, Edward. But now, you must take the visitors to Knapford Station. The fat controller will give you your orders. I thought we weren't to bother the fat controller, Hero. I was wrong, Edward. The fat controller didn't want that at all. And Hero steamed swiftly away. Hero whooshed up to Farmer Trotter's farm. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Hero. I'm having a wonderful time with the piglets. Good, Thomas, my friend. But now, you must puff as fast as you can to Knapford. The Fat Controller is waiting with orders for you. I thought we weren't to bother the Fat Controller, Hero. I was wrong, Thomas. The Fat Controller didn't want that at all. Bye, Hero! Hero clickety-clacked onto the Fenland track. Percy was there. The ducks were swimming happily. Hello, Percy. Hello, Hero. The ducks are very happy. I'm pleased to hear that, Percy. But now, you must take the ducks to Knapford. The Fat Controller has orders for you. I thought we weren't to bother the Fat Controller. I was wrong, Percy. The Fat Controller didn't want that at all. But how can I get the ducks back into their crate? I will help you, Percy. Hero blew his whistle. It sounded like a duck quacking. The ducks flapped and flew into their crates. Thank you, Hero. Later, the fat controller had given his orders to the engines. Now, you all know what you have to do. Chuff away and be really useful. Hero puffed forward. And what shall I do, sir? You, Hero, will do what you have always done. You will be helpful, Hero. Helping me. And nothing could have made Hero happier. Creaky Cranky. It was the spring holiday on Sodor. There was to be a party for the children at the Duke and Duchess's new summer house. All the engines were very excited and very busy. Thomas chuffed cheerfully into the docks. James and Henry were passing through. Good morning, James. Good morning, Henry. Where are you puffing to? I'm taking these straw bales to the summer house for the children to climb on. I'm taking wood to make a stage for the children's show and barrels of lemonade to drink. How wonderful. I'll see you later at the summer house. Good morning, Cranky. What's good about it? It's the Duke and Duchess's party day. Party, smarty. I don't go to parties. I'm stuck here loading and unloading all day. I haven't had a moment to rest my hook. That load is for me. It's eggs for the children to paint. Hurry up, Cranky. You're creaky, Cranky. 
What's the matter? Are the eggs too heavy a load for you? <laughs> Cranky didn't like Thomas's joke. He didn't like being called creaky. No, they're not too heavy for me. They're light as fluff. <laughs> You're not strong enough to pull anything heavier than fluff, tiny Thomas. That's why Henry and James have the heavy loads. Now, Thomas didn't like Cranky's joke. Fizzling fireboxes. I'm as strong as any other engine. You're not as strong as me. I can lift much heavier loads than you could ever pull. Thomas really didn't like that. We'll see, Cranky. I have lots of time to deliver the eggs. First, I have to prove Cranky wrong. James has a heavy load. I'll go and find James. So Thomas steamed sternly out of the docks. Thomas found James at the junction by the washdown. Hello, James. I don't have a lot of jobs today. Shall I deliver your heavy load of wooden barrels for you? You can stay here at the washdown. Then you'll be perfectly polished for the party. James thought this was a very good idea. Thank you, Thomas. So James was uncoupled from the heavy flatbed of wood and Thomas was coupled up. The flatbed was heavy. Puffing and puffing, Thomas set off for the docks. Thomas chuffed back into the docks. You again. What are you doing with that wood? This flatbed is very heavy. I'm sure you can't lift it. Cranky looked at the flatbed of wooden barrels. I'm sure I can. Cranky's hook swung low over the wood. Thomas watched and waited. With a creak and a crank and a crank and a creak, Cranky raised the flatbed into the air. Thomas's boiler buzzed. Told you so. You're still creaky cranky. And you're still tiny Thomas. That made Thomas very cross. I will prove Cranky wrong and still have time to deliver the eggs. I'm sure Henry had an even heavier load. I'll go and find Henry. So Thomas steamed stormily away. Thomas found Henry waiting by the coal hopper for his special coal. Hello, Henry. I don't have a lot of jobs today. Shall I deliver your heavy load of straw bales for you? Then you can wait here for your special coal. Henry thought this was a very good idea. Thank you, Thomas. So Henry was uncoupled from the heavy flatbed of straw bales, and Thomas was coupled up. The flatbed was very heavy. Puffing and puffing, Thomas set off once more for the docks. Soon, Thomas puffed back into the docks. You again? Now, what are you doing with those straw bales? This flatbed is very, very heavy. I'm sure you can't lift this. Cranky looked at the flatbed of straw bales. I'm sure I can. Cranky's hook swung low over the straw. Thomas watched and waited. With a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak, Cranky raised a flatbed of straw into the air. Thomas's funnel fizzed. Told you so. You're still creaky cranky. And you're still tiny Thomas. That made Thomas even crosser. More than ever, Thomas wanted to prove Creaky Cranky wrong. He had to find the heaviest thing he could. Then an idea flew into his funnel. Lift me, Cranky. Cranky looked at Thomas. He couldn't let Thomas win. Cranky's hook swung low over Thomas. Thomas hardly dared puff. With a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak, and very, very slowly, Cranky raised Thomas high into the air. Bubbling boilers! Creaky Cranky is lifting me! Then there was trouble. Cranky creaked louder than ever. His crane arm stuttered and judded. It creaked and it croaked. Then it cracked. Oh, no! Cranky's crane arm had broken, and it was all Thomas's fault. Thomas was stuck, high in the sky and blowing in the breeze. Then the Fat Controller arrived. Thomas! What are you doing up there? I'm sorry, sir. I was... You are causing confusion and delay. 
The Duke and Duchess have no wood, straw bales or eggs. Now I see you have them all here. Cranky is broken and you, Thomas, think it's a good time to try being a bird. The Duke and Duchess are waiting. Thomas felt very silly. Then the Fat Controller looked at Cranky. And you're as silly as Thomas. Cranky crumpled. The shame to be as silly as a steamy. Soon a workman had climbed up Cranky. Slowly and carefully, Thomas was lowered and landed with a jolt and a judder. Just as Spencer arrived. Dear, oh dear, Thomas, what a mess. Little engines can get into very big trouble. Thomas felt even sillier in front of Spencer, but he knew now that being strong was only good if you were also really useful, and he had to be really useful. Spencer, I need your help. You are very strong and can pull much heavier loads than me. Will you take the wood, the straw bells and the eggs to the summer house for me, please? It's my fault that Cranky is broken. I must put everything right as quickly as I can. Hmm, very well. Thank you. I'm sorry, Cranky. I know you're strong, stronger than me. I'll be back soon with the right parts to fix you. Then Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed out of the docks. Thomas wished like the wind all the way to the steamworks. Hello, Victor. Cranky creaked and now he's cracked. He needs new parts. You've come to the right place, my friend. But a plenty here. We'll have Cranky up and lifting in no time. Soon Thomas's flatbed was loaded with new parts for Cranky. Thank you, Victor. Of course, my friend. Give Cranky my best. And Thomas huffed happily away. Thomas puffed into the docks with his heavy flatbed. Cranky was still looking crumpled. Here you are, Cranky. We'll have you fixed in no time. Thank you, Thomas. That's a heavy flatbed. You know, you're not tiny. And you're not creaky. Cranky laughed. And that made Thomas laugh too. <laughs>